Hello, welcome to day three of the ploughing. We're here at the Lely Tent and we're joined by uh, owner of Lely Centre Mullingar and owner of the Lely Centre in Kilkenny, Niall McGarn. Niall, it's been a tough year for farmers. How has the year went for you so far? Yeah, it's kind of been a year or two halves. Um, it was a tough period there, maybe from March to July. When I say tough, things are a little bit quieter, a little bit yeah. slower. Farmers are a little bit nervous about investing. But four weeks ago, Hugh, was like someone flicked the switch. Okay. So a um, lot more calls, a lot more interest. And the show, like, we had more inquiries on the first day of the ploughing this year than we had in the whole of last year. Okay. So maybe it's a combination of the good weather, yeah. mid price improving, a little bit more positivity out there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, things are looking fairly positive going yeah, forward. So, yeah, look, things are looking up, uh, Niall. And look, I suppose labour shortage, there's been labour shortages seen around the country. And, like, I suppose come kind of peak season around, you know, your spring calve and, you know, it, it, it's tough on farmers and that labour always isn't there. So, like, what does, what does like, obviously, Lely, it's all about automation and technology. What does that automation, like, how does that help farmers? Well, look, as you said, Hugh, labour is a huge issue yeah. on, on a lot of farms. And, and managing labour is, is a skill set that not everybody has or everyone enjoys doing. So what we're finding is our typical sale is someone between 100 and 140 cows to maybe have family labour that isn't as available. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is future-proof their business. So they're mainly spring calving, grass-based systems, and what they're trying to do is set the system up that it can be run by one or two labour units okay. and have a bit of flexibility at the weekends. Yeah. And with the increase in, in building costs and increasing concrete costs, the two-robot system is very competitive against a comparative say 20 24 unit parlor because okay. there's a lot less building required yes yeah and i suppose like look a lot of talk around like you know mental health for farmers and you know getting away from the farm the likes of the plowing you know it's great for to get away for a few few days yeah. and have a bit of crack but like farmers probably aren't doing it enough and like they don't have enough of a, a getting away you know what i mean so like what is what does what does automation do for farmers in terms of kind of helping them kind of get a good work-life balance it was interesting yeah, yesterday um, we were here about half four or five o'clock and I think there was seven or ten people in on, in on the stand and most of them were customers with robots Yeah. and they were in no rush to go home Yes. Yeah. and the yeah. conversation came up and all the parlour, parlour boys are in the par, car park rushing to get out, they've cows yeah. to milk, yeah. we're here enjoying the day. Yeah. It, it's interesting, people buy to save labour and they look for more information on their cows managing better but the thing, a lot of people um, um, realise that they enjoy the most is the flexibility Yes. that not rushing to be home to do jobs have a bit more freedom in how to manage their time. Some would say they're a bit like a beef farmer, they've work to be done but there's a bit more flexibility of when they do it and that's sometimes a bit they enjoy the most. So when they're here yeah. at the ploughing, they could stay here till 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock if they wanted. Yeah, there's still there's work no to be done yeah. but there's no, they're not watching the clock all okay, the time. Okay, yeah, 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 and that's, that's very interesting. But look Niall, I suppose there's that kind of uncertainty next year around kind of the nitrates derogation and whether, whether farmers can kind of farm at the same level has that affected you in terms of investment? Like, like you know, if if if, if you can't if you if you can't be farming at the same level, is it worth you know, is it worth making that investment? Yeah, well, look, it's a fair question, Hugh, and it's hard to answer. And we got to yeah. trust our politicians and our representatives that they, uh, you know, keep us where we need to be and help us make best use of our competitive advantage, which is growing grass. But look, we've a fantastic dairy industry. We've uh, a huge competitive advantage in growing the grass. And we're probably in a little bit of a bubble in our business. We're talking to the people who are progressive. We're trying to future-proof their business yeah. and have a little bit of a confidence about going forward. So we're probably a, a bit lucky in that regard. But look, the pipeline is, is, is busy. There's a lot of people looking at the future and um, we're happy they're going to be a big part of that. Yeah, so you, you so at this time of the year, would you still recommend farming, farmers don't be putting your head in the sand? You know, keep look forward and see if you can make that investment. Yeah, well, look, everyone's got to mind their own business, yeah. and it depends on where they are. But I know there's a lot of guys out there who aren't sure about succession, yeah. uh, and with the still have another 10 or 15 years left in them. Yeah. And what a lot of guys are doing is investing in automation to allow them extend their career and maybe leave the farm in a better place for someone your age or your vintage who yes. might want to yeah. have a career and maybe be involved in the business at a later stage. So yeah. there's a lot of interest in that, that type of situation. 100%. Look, thanks for your time, Niall. That's been brilliant. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Yeah.